So right now it's probably about 15 after 6. So there's a feeder out in the field. And I do have the proper baiting permit to go along with my Alabama hunting license and all that. So it's, it's all legit. But what I like about this setup something comes out to feed it keeps them occupied I can make sure I get a good shot off and what's really nice is this is a perfect place to test your bullets in the field right that, that's one of the things I really enjoy about coming over here not only am I getting some meat and taking it to wafers and Hartzell which is the best processor in the world not only am I doing that but I'm able to test my hunting that I've worked up in the field on the game that I'm actually chasing. So it, it's it's a win-win all the way around. And this particular hunt is pretty special because my wife and her best friend and her best friend's daughter, they're also down here at the property hunting as well. They're in a different shit now, so we're in a different location. But the daughter turned 15. So her mom wanted to take her hunting as a birthday gift. I thought that was really cool. So we set it up. We were able to get all the appropriate licenses and everything squared away. And so we're here. My dad is taking them and getting them set up. I'm over here at this shooting house. So now we just got to wait and see. Let me see if I can get it. spot ran out of the 
field, they, they had been gone, the, the little small eight point, he was still walking around feeding. Then a couple of does came in from my left and started walking down the field. Well, then they looked back to the left, and I mean, I showed enough good come walking into the field, and I was like, Holy cow, what a day, what a day. All right, so, we're gonna go take a look at that buck, but look what else we got going on, fellas. Yes, sir, blood trail right over there. You see the white belly right there in the center of the screen. That's a, a doe. Came into the field. It's uh, let's see what time is it? 8:25. So shot that doe a couple of minutes ago. She piled up. What'd she go? 20 yards into the woods. She piled up. Let's get over here. Let's take a look at this buck. I did come down just to check to try to find blood and I just kind of peeked right here around to the left. Now he was standing right here basically to the left of the feeder facing the feeders. There was another buck standing back behind him over here to the left. It was a small, I believe it was that small eight point. And so he was facing the feeders and he kind of turned his head just slightly back to the left looking at him and that's when I shot. So he was right here holy smokes holy smokes oh, <laughs> oh crap oh <laughs> oh nelly oh nelly wow holy cow he piled up where'd he go 10 feet maybe Holy cow. Oh, good night. Look at that dude. Holy smokes. It's like a tank. I gotta buy some work my gun. Oh, let me get my prop up against the tree. Holy cow. Freaking horse. Holy cow. Holy smokes. Oh, look at him. <laughs> oh, man. Good night. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's my biggest to date right there. Holy smokes. And so there's the entry. Uh, there's the entry hole. Hang on. Let's see here. Let's see if we can flip him over. Oh, we didn't get a pass. 
pass through. Nice. Sweet. So that way, oh, maybe I'll be able to uh, recover the bullet. I, I got to cut him open and see if I can find it. That's the Spear 130 grain Grand Slam. That load that I worked up recently with the uh, Oh, excuse me, oh, what was that? Maybe IMR 4350 where I was talking about, I think I was jumping like four tenths. And then I shot, I think it was like 55 grain load. And I think that's the recommended, that's the max in the manual. And that shot the best out of the ones I tested. But I mean, I was only shooting three shot groups and I was like, I could probably load any of these and that worked just fine. That's the load that freaking dropped the hammer on this dude. Oh. oh, man. I'm still shaking. All right, well, that's it. We're going to kind of, well, that's not it. I'll, I'll probably video me dropping him off at Weaver's, um, which is the best processor. I don't care who you are, where you are, the best processor, hands down. This dude is about to get turned into summer sausage. So, all right, y'all stay tuned for that. Biggest book to date, let's go. guys gals for any gal that tunes in uh, just dropped off my wife her friend and uh, her friend's daughter I just dropped them off dropped them back off the house uh, they've got somewhere they gotta go so had to drop them off now I'm backtracking over to uh, weavers <clears throat> to go drop off the deer and one thing I want to touch on, okay, it's just it's been it's it's been pretty cool uh, because I've had to drive quite a bit with these deer attached to the back of my vehicle, sitting on the luggage rack. I bought one of those, which by the way, the the ones the little cargo racks that you can buy from Harbor Freight, highly recommend it. It folds up if you're not using it, so you can just leave it attached and folded up and it's you know for the most part out of the way and then when you need it you just fold it down it's perfect it's great um, especially for the money I mean, you can't can't beat it and so but i've had to drive quite a bit with these deer on the back of the vehicle and there have been several people that have driven by or that have passed me and I'll look over and they're giving me the thumbs up. And I, I think that's cool, right? Because when you, I don't know, maybe it's a social media thing, but when you go and you post pictures of the deer that you kill, like on the Alabama Deer Hunters page or whatever, somebody will post a buck and it, it might be a, a small six point, right? They're like, man, I got it done. He's not the biggest, but he's a trophy to me. Who cares? Who cares? Like, what difference does it make? And, and the, I think the problem comes in, people try to justify why they shot what they shot, you know, and all that, because it, of just that, right? When people post that type of stuff, other people will then go on and be like, well, should have given it another year, right? It's whatever, whatever that means. Uh, it just, that type of stuff, that negativity feeds into someone who instead of being just completely thrilled about you know making a good shot on an animal and harvesting the animal instead of focusing on that and celebrating that and how awesome it is you know they're trying to justify why they killed what they killed like you will 
never see me trying to justify what I kill. I like to eat deer meat, period. And you can't eat the antlers. So I really don't care. Like a doe walks out, I'ma shoot it. If a spike walks out, I'ma shoot it. Not where I was at today, cause my dad and my uncle try to manage that property a little bit more strictly, right? So for me, it's when I go over there, it's always, hey, I'd rather, I'ma shoot a doe. And then as far as me shooting a buck over there, it's gonna have to be something bigger than I've ever shot before for me to shoot a buck over there, which is fine. I have no problem with that. I would, I would almost rather go over there and just shoot a doe. Like, I like to go over there. Like I said in my video, I like to test my bullets, test my hunting loads in, in, in real world situations, which I think is awesome. Love that aspect of it. And so, hey, if I make a shot on an animal, and I kill it like today. If I would have just killed that doe, you better believe that picture is getting posted on Alabama Deer Hunters. Like, look how awesome this is. I laid the smack down on a doe. And if it had been a spike, look how awesome this is. I laid, laid the smack down on a spike. I couldn't care less of someone else's opinion about what I shoot or why I shoot what I shoot. Shoot deer to eat them. Period. End of story. That's it. So that's me that's my personal thing everybody's got their own thing but like it just i thought it was really cool the amount of people i look over man they're 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 thumbs up right they're fist pumping they're they're going you know yeah you that's awesome you know that's that's pretty cool um and then the second thing is check this out it's going to focus we got a bullet recovery we have a bullet recovery holy smokes i got to get home and get the the meat and everything out of the bullet but man i was so pumped to find that i found that in the bug ended up having to pass through on the dough uh, so no potential for bullet recovery there but that bullet was in the underside it was just it was basically a against the hide of the opposing shoulder of the buck. He was he was pretty much broadside, maybe just ever so slightly quartering away. And where I shot, I'm assuming I hit a rib or something, one of the very front ribs up, you know, more toward uh, lungs and all that stuff, up toward the very front of the rib cage. I hit a rib because the shot where, I, where the bullet had, was lodged it, you know, under the hide, it was not directly across from the entry hole. So I'm, I must have hit a rib and which there was some, you know, pretty, pretty good devastation there on the ribs. Uh, so I must have hit a rib and it, it had, had to have deflected sort of slightly forward because uh, I found it more forward than where the shot angle would have put the bullet had it just passed through, right? So, uh, which is fine. I, I don't care. I was just happy to find the bullet. And it was lodged under, you know, on the opposing shoulder, just under the hide, so I was able to cut it out. And so I'm really pumped about that. But I'm on the road to Weavers on Highway 36 now. Got to get out there drop these deer off and head back to the house so uh i'm trying to think this is probably where we're going to wrap it up there's really nothing else to uh to see here i might film nah i don't even know if i'm gonna film weavers uh it's just it's a great place i mean they have the best summer sausage the, the, like hands down it's not even close uh the best summer sauce period that's they're so well known for that so, going to get those deer dropped off, and that's where we're going to leave it. I'm really pumped about how the 270 performed. I uh, shot that doe at 35 yards. I, I stepped it off after the fact and shot her at 35 yards, had a complete pass through. She was hard quarter and two, and so I, was, I put it right in her chest, hoping that, I, that the bullet, you know, that I, I would... I wouldn't get an exit and I'd try to recover the bullet and then that buck I, I ranged it 
a range of the feeder and from the shooting house to the feeder is like 86 yards. He was just slightly, he was a little bit behind the feeder and to the left a little bit. So maybe 90 yards was the shot. And he was pretty much broadside for the most part. Um, so I, I couldn't be happier with how that load performed. I mean, that's exactly what you wanted to do. Um, yeah, it just did, it did great. So really excited. I hate that, uh, you know, the, my wife and her friend, her friend's daughter, I hate they couldn't, you know, get a shot on something. They only saw a spike and a doe uh, all morning. And so I hate that. Kind of wish they would have been able to have a, a buck or something come out in the field you know, like a six pointer, the one of that, that small eight that I saw, that would have been a perfect uh, deer for her to shoot. That would have been great. That would have been awesome. Or just an absolute giant. That would have been even better. But it didn't happen. So goes hunting sometimes. I reckon that's where we're going to leave it. So super pumped i'm still right like i'm had zero sleep last night so i'm really only running off of adrenaline of killing the buck and killing a doe on top of that that's what i'm running off of right now and like four cups of coffee so that's where we're gonna leave it hope you guys enjoyed it i know there was no action footage as far as you know seeing me shoot the buck but uh, i don't have my little scope adapter I think my buddy still has it. I think I gave it to him. I can't remember if I got it back, but I didn't take it on this trip. And if I would have taken it, I would have given it to them to use to try to film just in case she would have been able to kill her first deer. I, that would have been cool to get on film. So I wouldn't have had it anyway. Um, but just in general, man, what a day. What a hunt. My dad was there. That was that was awesome. Right? The only thing that would have made it better is if my brother would have been there and my uncle. Like, if we could have had you know kind of everybody there which which rarely happens i mean it's, it's kind of a big ordeal you know to to drum up a, a day where you could get you know my cousin and you know, get everybody there right try to have a whole big family deal everybody go out there and hunt that's that's pretty difficult to pull off but man it was so cool just to be able to share that with my dad you know him being there him pulling down there on the four-wheeler and being like holy smokes that's a big that's a that's a, that's a big old body deer right there yeah that was that was cool so great day super blessed that's it that's where we're gonna leave it we will catch y'all next time y'all have a good one